Hello, my fellow Carmelers. How are you doing today? This is a little different, isn't it? We got a special guest right here, Chris Bell from Scale Speed Garage, as you can see with all the uh, treatments we have on the screen. And uh, he's got something really cool that uh, he wanted to announce. So I thought, oh, hey, let's, let's announce it. What the heck? So we're going to announce it. Ah, Chris, well, thanks for uh, asking me uh, asking me to do this. I, I something new nobody knows about yet. We got like you know what do they call that? The extra extra read all about it happening right now. So <laughs> you got something right. new going to be happening with uh with Scale Speed Garage and your uh, the, all your design work, huh? Yes, sir. Um, thank you for having me back on. I'm really excited to be here. Um, this will be sort of a scoop for those that don't catch it elsewhere. Um, here in about 30 minutes, Facebook and Instagram are auto scheduled to release a post um, that is announcing all of this officially. Um, but I know there's definitely some people who watch this that don't, uh, you know, don't yet follow our socials or our email list. Um, and so just another great way to get the word out. I do want to mention to the viewers that uh, Matt and I did not plan this coordinated shirt campaign we've got <laughs> going on here. I guess we're both just giving a lot of love to our friends, Andy's Hobby Headquarters hey, who's in Andy's Phoenix. Hobby Headquarters? I almost wore the hat, but I went uh, on a shoot today. <laughs> I'm I'm actually representing uh, Arizona top and you know top and toe really I, the oh, Dwarf yeah, Car yeah. Museum in Maricopa yeah. super cool uh, yeah. got a chance to visit there when we were out in April um, that was a that was a fun trip huh oh it was a blast um, you know Josh from VCG Resins and I it's kind of our new annual tradition to to travel to a show once a year and uh, in a Porsche. It, <laughs> That was a new part of the uh, new part of the tradition, but I think that one will stay. They got to take in a model car mafia meeting. Yeah, um, really, just everyone <laughs> that night. made us feel at home. Um, heck, we we probably overstayed our welcome at your place until two a.m. looking at resin casting stuff, and uh, we had fun, man. Yeah, yeah. We, we waited for all the for everyone to go. We went out into. And it was just us. Hey, let I'll show you where where I do my stuff. And yeah, uh, you know, and it was cool too because Josh comes from the resin casting yeah. background, so he brought in some advanced knowledge. I'm a stranger to all that. I jumped right into 3D printing, so it was really cool to kind of hear you guys talk about it and hear Josh's questions and and hear you guys kind of bounce oh, ideas. Yeah, off we one another we and, actually really did have some pretty pretty cool conversations, you know, about about the industry and everything. And definitely, yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we all work really good together. You know, we're we're kind of putting out. Uh, the product that that in in our ways that to help the hobby out and help help builders and and we each each side has its strong points so and yeah absolutely you know people people ask me sometimes like hey i want to start selling full kits what's the best way to 3d print this and oftentimes i really honestly encourage them you know you might consider casting the bodies Oh yeah. For for bodies and larger things like that, I really do think think that casting still has a lot of advantages. First is the time, right? You can pop out a body every say 30 or 40 minutes. Oh yeah. When you're casting resin with a printer, you know, that body is going to run for several hours, so there's that factor. Um res uh, printed resin for thin wall stuff like that, it, depending on the resin you're using, may not be as dimensionally stable as cast resin, so you can end up with more issues for warping and things like that. 
Um, you know, so that's something I recommend to anybody that's kind of looking at that realm is, you know, if you're willing to put in a little bit of extra effort to also create, you know, also create the molds and, and do all of the resin casting master that you're happy with and then creating mold that yeah. is the way to go. Oh, yeah. And you and I have discussed some things I also discussed with, with Joel from Iceman. We've all talked about doing some collabs. I know that um, I have some ideas of later on in the future, some full kits I want to do. And I will probably, you know, be working with one of you guys uh, to probably make some of the kit where I, it would be better for the stuff to be 3D printed. And I'll take care of the big stuff. Definitely. It, I, it, it's definitely yeah. a, a medium that works very good together, I, I believe. And I'm yeah, just, absolutely. You know, I just, I don't want, I had noticed now so many people that 3D print, I'm like, you know, I, I was going to get a 3D printer and I'm just like, I don't think I need to. I've got, I know too many people now in the business that I'd rather just contact, contract them, pay them to do it. I have, you know, my friend Jim Rogers from Salvino's JR Models who, who makes me a lot of small masters and pieces and stuff for some of the stuff I do. And, you know, you and I have talked about a few things. So yeah, it's, 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 a uh, it's pretty interesting how, how more advanced everything is getting to make better product for the modelers. Cause I know you guys can do stuff that what we used to have to do is, well, especially you, you being a designer, that's what you do. You're the designer. Um, the stuff that we would have to hand make to make masters. And now we could contract someone like you to do the design work. And then you can 3D print the master and then we can smooth it all out, make it really perfect and then make a mold. And man, we could do some really cool stuff together, all of us, which, Absolutely. which I was actually thinking about that today. I want to ask you about some off camera that I would like to see if you could do for me. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, yeah, we but, will probably but, yeah. get you converted to the dark side sometime. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. You know, I'm sure. Uh, my buddy, I have a buddy named Brandon Mesher who lives in Pennsylvania, a good buddy of mine, and he's he's actually kind of the guy that I credit with turning around my previous business, my printing business, and because of his help doing that, he's really um part and parcel to why scale speed garage even exists today um but for the long game brandon said no i don't want a printer i don't need a printer i can just buy from everybody else and brandon is now a scale speed garage member joined last year um <laughs> he's printing too so uh you know, I think a lot of people kind of start out thinking that they don't need to print or they don't want to print and then yeah I know, you know the, can, the allure be becomes too yeah. strong. <laughs> I might have to do that. I and I always thought my, my plan was, I mean, was to one day get a printer. Not that I would produce printed parts to sell, but more to produce pieces that I would print to uh to for masters. But um, I could see like we're talking about, like if I had a complete kit and there'd be small items like wheels, I think. I think the 3D printing world, like I'm, I'm producing some wheel. That's why I usually stay away from wheels. And you know, I, I can't. Did I have I screwed you over and not gotten a set of those Porsche wheels to you? I got to get See, those. I've seen them online though, and they look fantastic. Yeah. So they do, but honestly, they would be better printed. Just con just printed. If I if I could print, if I had a printer, I I have the, I I'm. You know, I'd be able to print those and they would probably turn out better. And that would actually be better labor wise for me. For um, sure. How many of those do you cast in one shot? Oh, I, I can cast a set of four in one shot and I have multiple molds. And sometimes if there's a little void, you know, while I'm mixing something out and they're, they're sitting there and I drop a little resin in, in like if there's a hole, sometimes that sure. happens. But and they turn out really good. I haven't had a failure rate, but of course, like the set of molds I was using right now, I popped one out, and you know it's got those for the holes that go around there, little tiny pieces of uh, 
of uh, RTV that sticks through, and they finally give way and rip out, and that mold's done, man. I can't cast yeah. another wheel with that. But I've, so, I've been... I mean, just a thought with a mid-size printer, something yeah. like an LU Saturn or an AnyCubic M5, you could probably print six or eight sets at a time yeah. in about an hour. So, uh, yeah, and, and honestly, that's probably almost better than me. About the same, really. I probably cast about that of that many sets in an hour. Sure. But even even when you look at them, it's like you flip over the back of them. They don't, even though it's not important, the important side will look just as good as the printed one. But on the back, the print all it looks just it's more satisfying looking. You know, the the back side, because it's an open face mold, the resin is just kind of you know, like that. Sure. And, and it definitely is a heck of a lot more presentable if it was a printed piece. So I you would definitely with, you get some of that with 3D printing though too. Whatever that support yeah. side is in your piece, whatever's facing the build plate. Um oh, you know, yeah. there's some cleanup you know, to be done there too. So yeah. And and you know, and that's that's a thing. It's like I came up with a method of casting tires. I can definitely do tires really good and not have a bad side the way I do yeah. tires. Not not knocking the resin, uh, not the 3D print guys, please don't get bad. Please don't get bad. It's just the way it is. And we all deal with it. No, it's not that big of a deal, but always on the other side of the resin printed tire, uh, you have all the scars from the, you have to have, you have to, because there's no other way. So it's nothing bad. It's just the nature of the beast. It's I can resin cast tires and not have that scar scarring. So the back yeah. side looks just as good as the front, but, Oh my goodness! To produce tires and resin, uh, it, I have to sell them for more money because it, there's more labor involved. They take longer, so that's sure. why I've gotten gotten away from the the, the tire thing. And um, by all means, I mean, geez, every day, like Joel, he's constantly announcing a new tire. You guys, you you came up with that. That mud tire. I have a mold for the mud tire. Remember the old orange blossom special? You and I were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. And I can make beautiful replicas of the orange blossom special tires. And I'm thinking about getting those tires from you to do because I want to do a polar truck. I always wanted to do a yeah. polar truck. And I'm thinking, wow, those tires are cool because yours, yours are, are good here, right? Instead of the Dixie thing. The most recent just, ones we did? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so that actually came around our buddy Jason Becker here in Colorado builds almost exclusively monster trucks. Um, oh, yeah. And he was looking for something that was a little bit higher detail than the the kit tires that come in like the AMT, you know, USA yeah. one or whatever. Um, and so we put those together for him. Those are those are big tires. Those are, uh, you know, the 66 by... 43 oh yeah um, you know the full size monster truck tires the super terra grip tires from goodyear yeah, those, um they look great well thank you um but yeah so you know just uh, that, definitely a ton of ability to put in very fine detail you know on on that tire we put in the you know the the detail on the sidewall for the the tire size and the ply rating and you know all of these really tiny little things that people are going to notice when that build sits on a con contest table you mentioned joel from iceman i did want to give him a quick shout out um i have a nephew who um joined the marines uh, my both my twin nephews joined the marines um, and they ship out in July for basic. And earlier this year, one of my nephews got a model airplane for Christmas and he was really excited. He came over and I showed him how to build it. And just recently he was saying, you know, I really want to build a car model before I ship off. And I said, perfect, let's do it. What do you want to build? He said, you know, I love Mustangs. I said, let's go check out the stash. He picked out the, uh, uh, the Ravel monogram. GT350H. Um, I said, perfect, let's do it. I'm going to build the uh, Ravel 2014 Mustang. Um, and we had planned to do just like a 48 hour build this past weekend. We kind of got to Sunday afternoon and, and he was starting to look for shortcuts. And I said, you know, 
let's finish these up next weekend. No need to rush. You're going to love the end product much more if you, um, you know, if, if, if we take our time on it. Uh, but I got to thinking I really wanted to add some five-point harnesses to my Mustang. Um, and you'll you'll like this, Matt. I'm doing like a little street strip kind of nice. thing. Uh, the kit engine, but with our, uh, our side mount pro charger on it. Nice. Uh, I printed up the That'll Boss be... 302 intake from Motoboss. That's going to go on it. But Show some of those you know, things again, man. I mean, oh, yeah. full size screen. Show that stuff. Oh, I love the color. Thank you. You know I love those S197s. Yes, sir. Mm. Um, and there's the... So, again, that's the kit engine, but with our um, side mount pro charger on it. Um, and then I printed up the Boss 302 intake manifold. Oh, from Moto Boss. Nice. That's going to go on there. But, you know, I was building it and, oh, you know, yesterday I was realizing I really want to put some five point harnesses in this thing. I don't have any. So I started looking around online where I could get some. And, you know, I was like, wait a second. Joel Iceman Collections carries pro tech stuff. I bet they have them. So I sent him a message today, explained what I was doing, said, I really need this by next Saturday. And he said, you know what? I got you, buddy. So, I have some five point harnesses coming in the mail nice. um, and they'll be here by Saturday. So big shout out to Joel and all, all that he does for the community as well. Yeah, um, yeah he's super that, that I know just another one of the, there's so many great people uh, that are such a huge part of this, uh, this wonderful community that we have of model car builders that have made these businesses and, and have, you know, become friends of the, of the community and he's definitely one of them he's a great representation of wh what like what you and i do what you know, we got us we want to be like that too you know you want to yeah. be you want to be, be able to to help people out that are that you know that are in the hobby you know and that's the thing it's like you josh me joel we're real model car builders and charlie from pro tech you yep. know, and, and I'm telling you, you're getting that. You're going to be very happy with that product from Charlie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's he's the best. That guy is awesome. Him and I speak quite frequently on the phone. We've been friends for a long time, and it's just great people like that 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 um, decide to, you know, do what people say don't do. Turn your hobby into your business. But man, you know, when you're when you enjoy what you're doing, you're never working, right? Exactly. You know, that's what I love about our community, too, is there is just so much of that helpful yeah. contributing spirit. You know, I'm in a couple other hobbies. I just recently got back into photography. So I'm in a bunch of photography groups on Facebook now. And the difference is just night and day. The people mm -hmm. in that world are just like so protective of their secrets. They don't, you know, they're so snarky and, and yeah. not they don't seem to be as willing to pull people in and say, here, let me show you, let me help you. Um, and yeah, so, you know, exactly. to me, it's just such a cool thing about what we do. Oh yeah, it is. It is totally different because like, like me, a uh, uh, couple other things that I have interest in, I, I, you know, with the Fox body Mustang and stuff. And I just, I barely even watch the videos anymore or go on to the Facebook groups because man, it's just, I don't know, too much toxicity and, and people aren't really, you, you put something down, you need a little help and you just get, you get a couple of guys that are really great guys, but the majority of them just want to rip you apart for whatever reason. Or, you know, I always, my, my uh, Mustang is not very pretty. I, I It's, but it's in, it's, it's really a nice shape, but the paint is faded away and, and I put stickers all over it and I get crap from these guys, you know, that that's that looks ghetto doing that. Hey, it's my car. I want to do it the way I want. Paint shot. I'm gonna have fun with it. I like throwing racing stickers all over. It looks ridiculous to some people. I don't care. It's mine. But I, you know, why do you rip somebody apart? It's just like same with models. You know, it's just you know, you yeah. don't need to rip somebody apart because they do a style like that you don't personally like. So what? 
they're yeah. having fun with what they have with their hobby, you know, you, and, and you, there's a more tolerance with the model car community as much as we, we run into it as it's happens a lot on my Facebook group, but we handle sure, it pretty sure. quick and, 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 and you know, you know, harshly, but. And it's too. funny, like you don't see as much of that on Instagram. And I have this theory that it's because Instagram is a lot more curated to your tastes Whereas yeah. on Facebook, I feel like on Facebook, we're always getting hit with like a lot of really divisive topics. You know, the, the, the Facebook algorithm really seems to feed on things that are controversial. And so I feel like a lot of people just get on Facebook and they're instantly ticked off. Yeah. Um, no kidding. You know? <laughs> About, but, you yeah, know, plug wires and. Oh yeah, Dog uh, wheels. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I did love all of the memes that came out of That's out of that cool. yellow plug wire thing. I I applauded and I laughed. Yeah, I um, know. You know, and, and a point that I made. I know that it was t it started and and I'm guilty of it. But it was like it was Father's Day. We ever yeah. having fun? I yeah. know it came from kind of a ridiculous statement somebody made. He probably really regretted saying it, but. You know, sure. you're going to say something like that and put yourself out. The thing was, is one, that that statement got taken away and he was never brought up. There was no bullying against that person. I would never, ever yeah. allow anything. He was never mentioned. I don't even remember what his name was or anything. It doesn't really yeah. matter. But it stemmed off something that was so funny that and fun. But the thing about it, that day, the the... The Facebook group was so active with people posting pictures of really, really cool detailed engines. Yeah. It's like, look at the positive that came out of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what, why, you know, get ear, and it just is, and it still kind of pokes in every once in a while. There's yeah. uh, no need to, like, like we said, like we made a goof of it at, uh, during our little private thing we have with, with the producers, which, by the way, he, Chris happens to be one of my producers at the end. You see him all the time. Um, so we have a, a producer's uh, once a month stream and we had <laughs> the background was Excel super coil stuff. And we had an Excel super coil up in the corner there. And we were just laughing about it. One of the guys, Robert, Robert Judson had had yellow, what looked like Excel super coil uh, Excel uh, uh, spark plug wires hanging in the background. Oh, man. We took it far, didn't we? <laughs> I really reach out to, like, Joel and Charlie and Andy and see if they saw an uptick in sales of yellow spark. Yeah, I, I, wonder, I wonder that. I haven't asked Joel yet, but I did talk to Charlie. He, he doesn't get on Facebook, so I sent him screenshots and I gave him an update on it. He thought it was hilarious. He said, no, I didn't really notice, but I'm going to... You know, it might have come later on. I don't know, because I was he thought that was hilarious. But he also kind of was really it, it kind of like he got between Joel and I, we posted packets of Protect yellow spark plug wire, which yeah. happens to be. Um, I mean, I got nothing but Protect. It's all hanging there. But I have more packets of yellow. I just I like using I like I like the looks of the the Excel. Whether they're good or not, I don't care. It's model yeah. building. It looks cooler. I've gotten one of my models to actually start before anyway, so it's kind of a non-issue for me. <laughs> true, true. I, I don't think we have to worry about that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I just love anything that really catches the eye in an engine yeah, bay. Honestly. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of times that is like a contrasting color spark plug wire. Oh, or, yeah. Definitely, you know, a, definitely. a green cone filter or, you know, whatever. But yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But yeah, it, it have, there were so many great, great engine shots, even some real ones, too, which I love seeing the real stuff, too, on the on the on the Facebook group. Oh, it's yeah. It's inspiring to see real car. I mean, that's what we do. We try to emulate real cars, right? Yeah. Great, great for inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 
Yeah. So another another cool development for our community that I'm really excited to share and that I'm really excited to be a part of, we have a new magazine coming out serving yes. the scale auto modeling community. I am so excited about it. I'm going to go ahead and share my Yeah, let's see here. that thing. All right. Yes. Um, brand new magazine coming out for our hobby. Um, and the gentleman putting it together, the, the brains behind the operation, if you will, Scott Colmer is a name that should be familiar to a lot of people in our community. I ended up meeting him at Desert Scale Classic in, in Arizona oh, yeah. in April. Had a great chat. We kept in touch after that. And shortly thereafter, he came to me and said, you know, I really would love to have 3D printing coverage in every issue. Oh, would you nice. be interested in being a contributor? And I said, absolutely. You know, that's really um, key to the mission of what we do in Scale Speed Garage is, is not just about the files, but really about educating um, and bringing this content to the model builders. Um, so we will be, I will be contributing in every issue, we'll be looking at new files that are coming out from all the various designers, new 3D printed items that are coming out from the printers. We'll be looking at new equipment that's coming out, new printers, new resins, um, new software, and really just kind of taking a, a big picture view of 3D printing and how it's changing and influencing our hobby. So I'm super oh, yeah. excited to be a part of that. Um, Anybody who's interested in subscribing, the first issue is coming out fairly soon. That's going to be the August, September issue. You can go to automodelermag.com um, and get signed up for a subscription. It's a really reasonable price, too. Um, and, you know, just such a cool thing to, to have an additional publication in our hobby. And, and yeah. you know, I don't know about you guys, but when those magazines show up in the mail, I'm, oh, yeah, that, that stops everything. I, you know, yeah, I grab a cup of coffee and I sit down and I flip all the way through that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I, I met Scott years ago. Um, as a matter of fact, I see something. I don't know if you can blow it up on that other uh, it shows a page or some like different models. And there's this, that green altered wheelbase. Yeah. Let me see what I can do here. That's Scott's Scott's model. Very cool. And actually I'm going through my stuff that, yeah. See paint tips. It says paint ticks that car right there. I remember seeing that in person. I go, this is cool. I took some really cool pictures. I'm actually on my computer looking for that day, and this was a long time ago. It was in Oxnard, California, at a at there was an auto museum there, and they had a uh, kind of an NNL style show there. That and that's where I met him, and then he started coming out here to the show we were putting on. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I can't find that, but I have a picture. If Scott's watching, hopefully he's watching. I'd like to have him on the show. Absolutely, uh, I'll uh... podcast. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, send the, I'll send the stuff. word his way. So that's Scott's custom ah. tow truck. Now, ah. beautiful shot right there. It's wonderful. Um, yeah. And what was really neat about this is I, I can't remember what model kit he started with. It was a custom thing. But as you can see, he flipped the whole thing around. He made the back, the front, the front, the back. And I got a couple other really cool. Well, and there, I think, nope, that's not his. Yeah, this thing, it was such a wow. cool custom. Yeah, that's that's Scott's work. But Man. this picture right here didn't make it in the magazine because if we look right here, <laughs> fly landed on it. And this was such a cool shot of the, the tow rig. And, and the fly was just out of scale. If it had been a 120 it's a little out of scale, scale fly, it would have added realism. He was in the, you know, he was on the windshield, so he's at the proper you know, spot of the car. But yeah, that was, yeah. The, the guy is a, an amazing modeler. And, I am, uh, I am so impressed by the guys that can do those yeah. full custom builds like that. Like Scott and shoot Ira Dom, Jim pistol, like some of my favorite things to see come from those guys. Yeah. The, I like the, the idea of a, you know, we need, need another magazine coming out. And I got to say, I like 
I really like the logo of that magazine. I would not only like to see that logo in sticker form, that would look really cool in decal form to put on some cars, yeah. on some model cars. Hot Rod Magazine delivery van. Yeah, I mean, it's just I, I I don't know. I like I like his little the whole the the lettering that he used. Just I don't know. It has a cool look to it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, um, yeah. I got putting to, it uh, out there. You know me. I'm an idea guy. I guess that's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. got to start playing around with shooting builds at a show. Um, we yeah. went to a show here locally to us at the beginning of June. Um, down in Montevideo, uh, sort of locally to us. It's about five hours away. But um, yeah. yeah, down in Monta Vista, Colorado, in the in the San Luis Valley. Um, and so I took my photo box and took some shots and hoping to do some more of that as well. So Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I know yeah. the couple shows that I put on, I ended up being the photographer to uh, uh, and sent my stuff off to uh, Scale Auto, and it's it's cool that I've been I have had photos in magazines, you know, in print. So it's pretty neat. Yeah, and Scale Auto. So that was that yeah. was a a hoot for me. It's a lot of fun. My favorite part I found about it too is. As as the photographer, your job is not only to capture expressive photos of a build, but really to get the story behind the build. And so I love yeah. talking to all the builders and saying, "Tell me about this. What you know? What inspired you? Why did you do this? Like you know?" And people's faces light up when they when they get to tell you about something that they poured their heart and soul into. Oh yeah, they love talking about their work. Yeah, everybody. We all do. We love telling. Yeah. We all kind of. It seems like a lot of people when they build a model, um, they'll have a story behind it. What inspired them? Sometimes, like, like I'll literally, especially some kind of fantasy race car build, I'll have like a whole backstory to why the car even exists. The yeah, sponsor, the driver, all that stuff. It, it's just a part of the fun I have in my head when I'm building my models, and people love to talk about that. You know. Uh, we build more than just little plastic cars. You know, we, we really do build worlds in a way. Worlds and stories. Absolutely. That's a good way of putting it. Definitely. Uh, and it's, uh, and it takes up a lot of our lives. <laughs> My stash is behind the camera. That may have been a, um, <laughs> and uh, a choice that I made on uh, purpose. Un unfortunately, my stash is behind the camera too. But I've also been doing this since 1985. I and I had some really bad influences, you know, when I met all these guys in the club locally that are still, yeah. some of them are still my friends. They're the worst, <laughs> I, aren't they? I walked in their model rooms and went, I want to have amazing amounts of models just like this. Maybe one day. My 401k. I know that if everything else falls apart, we can survive for a while on what's on the shelf. Yeah, I know that I have. I've chipped off a few pieces here and then and, and just to make a little extra money because I needed yeah. it or something. Even fairly recently, you know, I just needed a little, little extra cash, nothing yeah. much. And I brought some models to the club meeting and I sold them for, you know, you know, super cheap to help, you know, all the it put some money in my pocket. It also knocked a couple of, a couple of these kits out of my way. I yeah. really need to sell more. I need more room. I yeah. need room more than money, but to pick the ones that can go, you know, I, I literally have a reason for every single one of these. There's an idea in every one of those boxes. Yep. And yeah. I'm the same way. I'll every time I grab a kit, I have an idea for the build. Now, some yeah. of those kits six months later, I say, you know, not that excited about that idea. I probably won't get to it. Let's sell that or trade that and bring in yeah. something that I am more excited about. Well, <laughs> and that's the thing. I, I've done the thing where I sold off a bunch of kits to make room because I'm I got a lot of kits. I don't know if you've heard. And uh, um, for some reason, for every two kits I sell, four replace it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, 
It's all those jerks at the swap meet that give you deals that are too good to pass up. <laughs> well, it's also those jerks that run all those model manufacturers that, that we all complain about that they're doing such a bad job. They keep coming out with neat stuff, and I got to buy it. Yeah. Round two, how dare you come out with a 71 demon? I've only wanted one for 40 years. How dare you, Ravel, come out with that 71 Mustang? How dare you? I need five. AMT, There's how dare you come thing. out with a car that was built in this decade? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it doesn't happen like it used to, huh? No, sure doesn't. Which, by the way, if anybody watching is holding off on getting that kit because it's a curbside, don't. Go get the AMT 2021 Bronco. It is a beautifully manufactured yeah. kit, full of detail. I guarantee you, just look past the, the lack of an engine or add an engine from one of the aftermarket producers, and you are going to love that kit. You know, the thing about the modern cars that they are making kits of, quite honestly... Those kits don't need engines because when you pop the hood of them, all you see is this black piece of plastic or whatever. There's just a piece of plastic. It covers. There's so much stuff. The engines are really nothing to look at anymore. They're not fun like they used to be. Yeah. So who absolutely. really cares? Um, um, I, I, I've i never, you know, I've run into people that they go, I just, I have to have an engine or the, the, the model is just not worth it and or whatever it must be. I got to have the engine. And it's just like, wow, you. You really are cutting yourself short on some really awesome kits. Like some of these Tamiya kits, like my one of my favorite kits, is that that uh, um, that Porsche uh, club car. You know the GT GT two, yeah. I think. Yeah, GT two club car. I love that kit. No engine. Yep. No engine in it, but there's so much detail. And I, I'm that one that I'm working on that I put the different body on. You saw it. You saw all the detailing I was doing in the interior. That made up for the engine. I put more detail yeah. in, and there's lines and wires and stuff I did in there for the computers and the and the different whatever's going on in there. There's a lot of stuff to do to those models that you don't need an yeah. engine. A hundred percent. It really broadens your horizons as to yeah. where else you can add that detail. But you know, you're spot on about the underhood detail of the new cars. When we set out to do a couple file packs for the new Bronco, I got in touch with Steve Goldman, the product line manager at AMT, to chat with him. I didn't want to step on any toes um, and just you know run our ideas by him on what we wanted to produce for that kit. And we had that exact same discussion. I said, you know, I imagine engines are probably off limit because you'll probably want to add those in a future release. And he told me, no, if you want to do engines, go for it. If you've ever popped the hood of one of those, it's just a mess of wires and hoses and plastic covers. We even tried within Scale Speed Garage, we even tried to design sort of a drop in engine plate that would replicate some of that. And we just gave up, not because it was, you know, we could have done the design work, but sending people one piece that has hoses and wires going everywhere, it would have been impossible to paint and have look yeah. good. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, there's, you know, it, it's sometimes, there's so much other areas, that's what we just, we're talking about. There's so many other areas to put the concentration in. I, I don't know. Uh, sometimes you just got to get rid of this mindset that, uh, uh a model kit isn't worth its salt. If a model car kit, I should say, isn't worth its salt uh, because it doesn't have an engine in it. Yeah. Um, that's I. There's a lot of great. I've built a lot of really cool. Some of my favorite models I've built. I'm working on one right now. It's not. It it does, but doesn't have an engine. I'm not, you know, dealing with the engine in that Porsche. I'm putting all this effort in other areas. And yeah. this is thing is, and this is a model I'm going to take to shows. And I know it's going to get attention because of the unique stuff that I did to it. And that's what I'm aiming at. And, and I, you know, if I put a model on a table and it gets people to ask me questions about and say they like it, especially other builders that I, that I, I like their models and respect them. That's always, that's always my thing to, 
to all my buddies and other modelers, if they, if I can impress them with my model, that that's better than any award. But uh, yeah, you, there's so many other areas to hit on model cars to make a model car, you know, awesome. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. you're not going to, and I don't think, did they even put an engine like uh, round two came out with that, uh, um, that charger that the, like the police car they did a police car version and the charger the does have an engine i think it's a 5.7 if i'm not mistaken yeah see but i i remember when i got the um way earlier on when they got the they did the challenger and they mm -hmm. did the uh um the chrysler 300 the chrysler right. 300 had an engine in it but it was like pointless there's nothing really to and the Camaro, the uh, when they came out with the what was it, yeah. the 2010 Camaro? Yep. The, just the newer cool. Corvettes are the same way. Yeah. You just really it's get a plastic cover. And... Ooh, I can really paint this engine cover and do some nice detail on the Chevrolet logo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but those Mustang, I love those. I bought up a bunch of those Mustang kits, like what you you're working yeah. on, because yeah. They, they got that, you know, Ford, you know, they got that cool looking uh, coyote in there, man. They got nice coyotes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. The only, the only bummer that I thought about with this kit is the, the top of the engine block um, mm -hmm. or sort of in the valley here actually had like a raised uh, rectangular bump that the stock intake manifold sat on. Um, yeah. And so to, to do anything custom on it, I had to kind of cut it away. And I I could have gone more in depth on creating the valley. But again, this was set out to be a weekend build. And yeah. there's yeah. going to be an intake manifold on top of it anyways. But yeah, but yeah so, been very happy with the kit so far. Now that, yeah, I got a, I got a few of those. I want to build them. I love that. that I love that body style so much. Yeah. It's an old car now. Yeah, a, cl a classic almost. Yeah, I would love to see. I've been waiting for someone to do a kit to change like the uh, uh, the o the o five o five to o eight and have all the pieces to turn it into a Cobra jet. Hint, hint. No one's ever done that, you know. Like the, yeah. the Cobra jets, the Cobra jet drag cars. They have that that uh, for that quarter window on the side there's the louvers and a couple other parts there's a little bit of difference in the nose and uh um yeah i i want to do a cobra jet in the worst way but i'm just not that good to create that stuff by myself by hand i've sure. tried and they've been disaster so i'm waiting on some 3d print guys to design and print up some stuff for cobra jets i don't know you know just throwing it out just saying you go back one generation to the new eight new edge mustang uh some exciting news about that um scale i think it's scale jam or scale model jam is designing the trans kit to turn that like 99 to 03 mustang into um the svt cobra r so the hood with the power bulge um the the rear spoiler the uh, front splitter the independent rear suspension that one independent rear i don't know um i you know i've been meaning to actually chat with him and and get some more details but i remember seeing that car on the cover of car and driver when i was a junior in high school i believe yeah. and man is that a is that a cool car? It I always liked that generation of Mustang. I know yeah. it's kind of a polarizing generation, but the the way that SVT kit that just is. really sculpted those lines, it made it so so beastly. Yeah, that that's a super. I I didn't like them when they came. I remember when when well, the, the first version of them when they were the the SN ninety fives came out. You know. The great fox body so they well back then they just called them five o's man yeah the, the mustang gt five o's gone and uh they brought in that uh, sn95 which then turned into the 
the new edge. That generation of Mustang has definitely grown on me. They used to be just kind of like all over the place, but now they're they're getting expensive and rare, and yep. they're pretty cool. Yeah, uh, the SN95 is the one that's really grown on me. I I didn't used to care for that one, and it's only been in the last handful of years where it started uh, the the lines of it have started to soften yeah, was, on my eyes. It was kind of boring. A when little they, bit. When it changed to the new edge body styling, they got a little more aggressive looking and they were cool. Mm -hmm. And back then I actually kind of was flip flopped about them. I, I didn't like that new edge when it came out. And, yeah. and I thought, man, I think they killed the, but I don't know. You know, something was just, it, it, all those things. It's kind of like, I don't know how old you are, but I remember when a Dodge Dart was absolutely grandma's car and there's just no way anybody wanted one. And now they're cool as anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've always been a hot hatch guy. And so the, to me, I loved that that new edge Mustang really visually had a lot of cues that it shared with the, uh, the first SVT focus. Yeah. 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 That was a cool car too. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. But you definitely, well, see, you're a car guy, and <laughs> do you have a do you have a real car that's your toy, like a a little hot rod in the garage or something to mess with? Or I don't now. Um, I have a toddler, so okay. <laughs> I have a perfectly sane, practical, reasonable family car. <laughs> um, but just a few years ago, we did have a um, 2016 Ford Fiesta ST which oh, yeah. were one of the coolest cars I've ever owned. No kidding. Um, I've previously owned a, a little second generation Golf GT, uh, basically the, the eight valve GTI. Yeah, um, I like those. My absolute favorite car I ever owned. Uh, I was actually back in high school and right after high school, I had a 1989 factory supercharged Toyota MR2. Nice. Was, uh, the first gen, the, the little wedge. Um, yeah. You know, and they, they were, when that, that car came out. Sorry, go ahead. I remember when those came out. Yeah. When that car came out, Car and Driver called, I think it was Car and Driver, maybe Motor Trend, called it uh, the supercharged version, called it the poor man's Ferrari. And yeah, man, man, it really was. That thing handled sublimely. Oh, I heard that those things were just amazing on on the road course and autocross. Yeah. 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 That's whew. Yeah. Those are, those are pretty cool. I love, I love, I, I am, I'm not a, uh, I, I love cars. I love cars and I really do love Japanese cars a lot. I always have, I owned a few of them. I, I was a Datsun guy, you know, the old stuff. I love the Datsuns and stuff like that. Um, Man, now there's so much money. I would love to get something. There was a guy down the street from me for the longest time. He had a little Datsun station wagon, 70 something 70s, right? And yeah. it looked like, and he had it tricked out and it was a little lowered. And I think that, you know, it looked like that could be a fun, a neat little autocross car. And I kept yeah. watching it and I noticed he came home with like a 6970 Nova was working on it in the in the garage in the driveway there and i go i bet you that and he also had like a he had a bug eye um um a subaru uh uh wrx is that got correct? it so this guy was a all-around hot rodder you know he had yeah. that that sitting there and and he drove a a, a, a little a tacoma pickup that was kind of lowered with some pretty big wheels and tires on it and uh, I wondered, is that Datsun going to go up for sale one of these days? And it did at the wrong time, and I could not buy it. But, oh, I really like that little wagon. I love wagons. And, man, that would have been a cool, fun car to have. Might yeah. have even gotten rid of my Mustang over that. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, I tell you, there is something about the sound of... 
a little Japanese four cylinder. You throw some individual throttle bodies on it. You get that raspy intake sound. Mm -hmm. Man, that's you could make a four cylinder sound just as glorious as a V eight. Oh in my yeah! Opinion. Oh yeah! Yeah, there's. Uh, yeah, I, uh, everybody loves a V8. I've had quite a few of them, but I don't, I, you know, I hear the sound of any really well, well sorted out engine, whether it's a four or six. I mean, I'm a fan of straight sixes. I've actually yeah. was on a race team that we ran a, a, a six, a straight six Ford. And that was one of the funnest race cars I ever worked on. And we were racing with, with uh, V8s and stuff in a, in a stock car class. So this was a stout engine, and this car yeah. did its job. It was a full, full-on race car too. It wasn't, wasn't like a bomber or nothing. It wasn't junk, and uh, um, and I just find I find ex the odd engines and the the less than V eight engines mm -hmm. pretty exciting and and different. You know, they they have neat sounds to them too. You know, yeah. Uh, somewhere on YouTube, there's a build video of some guys that did a turbocharged Ford 300 straight six, mm -hmm. and it's a cool video. Yeah, I have to check that out. I got they get like 500 some odd horsepower out of it. Yeah, I remember when Mobius came out with that. Uh, but there was, I think, it was their first Ford pickup, the '69 short bed, and it had this the six cylinder. In there, and I remember everybody was going, "Why'd they do that?" And it's like take one i'll take two. everything about that that is my favorite that was uh, everything i want the six the straight six it's the short box and it's got the 69 grill yeah, yeah. i'll take a few of those I well and that. if you ask a lot of the aftermarket producers they'll tell you they sell more of the sixes and the four cylinders than they do a v8s yeah. because the v8s are in every kit you know you can go to the parts box and grab a yeah. small block small block chevy all day long yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, that that B, BG got his straight, his little Shelby straight six from you guys. Yeah, yeah. got it from Josh, didn't he? Got it from Josh. Yeah, that's that's not one of our designs. That comes from our friend Ryan Voyer of Scale Auto Model Works. Um, but beautiful engine, actually. I'm grabbing one from Josh to put in a Model A coupe, a thirty Model A coupe. Yeah. I started. Yeah, I tell you, I and I heard from uh, a few of. Uh, few of our friends over there at the show um that bg had that truck out and one of our fellow model car mafia members who's an old friend of mine and an old hot rodder he was going on and on about this truck and it was it was sitting next to chuck's i mean chuck's truck was great looking but did you see that other one it was did it and he's going on about and it had a straight six but it was all uh, I go, oh that was bg's that was bg's and he was just crazy about that. He just really dug, dug that engine in there. It did it. It fired that model off. Yeah, it really did. It made it right. Those are, you know, those are the details that really set something apart on a show table or a contest table. Yeah, yeah and and swinging us right back to just talking about uh, you guys and the three D printing industry and all that. What has you know? The resin casting, we did what we could do with what we had. You know, we most of the time were either copying stuff right out of kits or modifying it and, and you know, coming up with a different, you know, kind of a better look or something with an engine or whatnot and offering those. But when you guys started being having the ability to design from scratch on the computer and then a machine spits it out, that changed everything. And now we're getting whatever we want, whatever kind of engine we want. And that is, that's really cool. Yeah. And I mean, that, uh, that design knowledge is really the second piece to the puzzle, right? If you get a 3D yeah. printer, you learn how to 3D print. That's great. There are a ton of files out there, a lot of really great files out there that you can buy and download and print. But if you add that component of knowing how to do the 3D design work yourself, you have a an unlimited virtual parts box yeah. at your fingertips. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It's almost too unlimited. <laughs> Not enough yeah. money or time. 
Yeah, not enough time for sure. For us, for us just regular old builders. That... <laughs> oh, uh, man. It, a lot it, of people do say that it becomes its own hobby. You know, they say, I got yeah. a 3D printer and now I am I am building less. But That's the flip why side I don't want to get that, one. You know, they're, they're not cranking out builds, you know, just to crank out builds. They, they get to put exactly what they want into the build and so a lot of people say yeah i'm building a little bit less but i'm really enjoying the process even more yeah i'm i'm actually myself something i would i want to get into one of these days that would probably put my investing money into is wanting to do more design work like what you do like uh for making masters because like i'm working on a particular project right now that um, I'm doing it the old fashioned way and I'm creating something that never existed. And it's a, it's, it's a body that I, a body kit that I have wanted to come out with for 20 years. And I've been pretty much working on this thing for about on and off 20 years. If I could design it in a computer and just have it printed would be so yeah. nice. And uh, um, yeah, that, that right there is like what, when when all this technology first started hitting, that's what popped in my head was, ooh, making masters to print. Yep. Because me, if I was to design a body, there's no way that the body that I print out would be sellable, like you said, because I will print it to be thin, like a uh, like a, a injected, you know, styrene kit, like what we all deal with, yeah. and it just they the the resin isn't robust enough that resin um one day if i imagine it's going to be i mean the resins are getting better and better you know we have some resins on the market now that really are fantastic and do resist the warping and cracking that a lot of resins tend yeah. to do um the the soraya tech fast navy gray the the resin that we recommend yeah. really the only resin that we recommend for model car purposes you can get that body down to about a millimeter and a half in thickness. Um, mm -hmm. So it's still about a half millimeter thicker than what you might find on a lot of kit parts. But, you know, it really does perform quite well, even down to fairly thin wall thicknesses like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a... And I imagine we're going to start seeing more and more of that. Like with... with it, that used to be the problem with our resin too, casting. I mean... 20 30 years ago resin was that it was it was awfully brittle i mean i have some some kits just to have for fun just to bust them out and look at them and laugh a little with my friends yeah these things are unbuildable um what they used to ha but it's all we could get back in the 80s and sure early 90s and stuff but the resin bodies back then and they had to make them thick back then too like what the 3d printing guys have to do because yeah. that resin was really, really difficult. But like the resin today, I cast stuff so thin. It's, uh, you know, like I'll be doing some of the hoods, but in some of the bodies on my head, something. I don't have it here now, but I have this one body, you know, a cab. I just, oh, yeah, they already went on the market. They were over at andyshq.com. My little 50 Ford extended um, cab for the pickup. It's uh, it's as thin as the styrene cab that you'll have in that kit that you're going to replace this resin body with, and uh, and the resin that we get today totally can handle it. It's not a, yeah. not an issue. It stays. It keeps its shape. It doesn't crack. It's very flexible. I can I can take that cab and squeeze it, and it feels like a, a styrene kit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's going to eventually come to the because it's a because the the resin that you guys use and the resin that we use it's really two different things the chemistry is totally different so that, yeah. that stuff's newer and evolving yeah uh but you know that soraya tech resin that i was talking about it it and one of the main reasons that we recommend it is because it does have some flexibility to it. It doesn't yeah. just shatter or crack. You can take like we did, um, oh, for example, we did some hand brakes, like some big, big drift style hand oh, brake yeah. file pack. 
and you know the the arm of the brake itself is only like a millimeter by a oh, millimeter yeah. you can pull that right off of the supports with the Soraya Tech resin and it won't break it'll just pull nice and cleanly off of the supports really? spring right back into shape you know if it bends while you're peeling it off the supports that's okay because it just comes right back to shape oh, yeah. Um, oh yeah and like those shifters you gave me and by the way i need some mm -hmm. of those brakes i'm just saying <laughs> I, I yeah i got I, I, I like those 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 hand brakes i got a couple of drift car ideas Awesome. But yeah, I'll drop them in the mail for you. <laughs> um, yeah, the, I know. I noticed that when those those shifters I got from you um, were like that. They were so so thin. They look delicate, but they're, no, they're totally they're tough as nails. You know, you can you can manhandle them, get them all you know painted or whatnot, and get them up into your model and not have an issue. Drill into them. That used to yep. be another thing. You start drilling in, and they go. Yeah. And now yeah. you know you can drill into the stuff and it doesn't shatter. So mm -hmm. and this is like this is like within the past year or so. I mean, I have some 3D printed stuff that you know I got a few years ago that really is oh man, you know, stuff today is so much better. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But designing that that's what I want to get into one of these days. <laughs> well, so that plays into our big announcement. And yep. if it is something you are interested in, I will toss a free key to it your way so that you can learn that. I <laughs> am all ears and eyes and noses. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, I guess we can jump into that if that's go for it. Why where not? the conversation has taken us. Um, yeah. So again, kind of, you know, you've done a, a great job of uh, explaining a little bit of what scale speed garage is we exist to be kind of a one-stop place for model car builders who are using 3d printing in their building um, and so we not only have files for download uh, but really the and what i envisioned from the start was a place where model builders could come they could learn the entire process literally from pulling the printer out of the box and getting it set up all the way to the advanced topics of really fine tuning your settings, fine tuning how you orient things when you print them, maintaining the printer and things like that. Um, and so that's been our mission is to bring together not only the files, but also the education and throw a huge healthy dose of community into it too. So in the members area of the site, we have some community features. You know, we were talking earlier about Facebook and how it can get toxic at times. We have our own little mini Facebook of sorts in Scale Speed Garage where members can show pictures of what they're working on and ask questions and everything else. And it's amazing. It is so positive and supportive. There's never any toxicity that happens there. Um we have a weekly kind of like your producers call. We have a weekly hangout that we do on Thursday evenings over Zoom. And it is like a model club. It is people, you know, friends getting together to talk about models and real cars and 3D printing and just life in general. Same thing there. It never gets toxic. We have one rule. It's funny. I, we have one rule for that for, for that weekly call. And it is no politics. And, you know, somebody tried yeah. to kind of push the boundaries a little bit recently and they're like, well, why can't we? And I said, here's the deal. I think it's fantastic to be politically involved. That is, you know, being patriotic means being politically involved and having a stance and believing in that stance. But we are bombarded by that stuff 24 hours a day, every yeah. day of the week. Especially this days. is like two hours in our week where we can just shut that out you know <laughs> um but yeah so we have that we have that community element to it um and we have the files and and everything else we even have uh um an area in there with a few partner vendors um so like scale finishes is one of our partner vendors vcg resins uh by reese our friend josh reese um where members can get discounts on stuff they're probably already going to buy anyways uh, we have a partnership that we're working on renewing right now with Soraya Tech for our favorite resin. Um, so a great way to save money on stuff that 
people are going to buy anyways. But there have been kind of two, one primary thing that we've heard since we started, we've had a lot of people come and say, look, I don't need all that other stuff. I already know how to print. I don't need a one-on-one troubleshooting chat with you. I don't need to the videos on how to set up my printer or fine tune everything, but I do really want your files because they are fantastic. And so uh, we are relaunching a brand new scale speed garage experience on July 5th. And we've listened to that feedback. And so what we are doing is we're kind of reconfiguring our membership tiers. Um, And we are going to put a brand new membership um, at the bottom price wise. um, And that's going to come in at $19 a month. And that's going to give people access to just the five. Um, Well, the files, and we're also going to throw in that social wall, the little mini Facebook. Um, So people can kind of connect with other builders who are also 3D printing. But yeah, it's, it's going to be, you know, everything else in this world seems like it's just getting so much more expensive. And we said, you know what, let's go the other way. Let's make yeah. this more accessible to more people. Uh, so we will have our scale, our, our new tiers launching, at, like I said, on July 5th. The Scale Speed Garage Parts membership is going to be that $19 a month membership, going to get you a bunch of files every month. And if you join on an annual plan instead of monthly, you can take like 20 or 25% off of that even. Um, So that's going to be perfect for those guys that are already printing. They already know what they're doing. They don't need the hand holding, uh, but they just want additional files. Um, And then... On the uh, the middle tier is going to stay basically the same as it is now. The middle tier is going to get some additional bonus files every month. Plus, they get access to all of the how-to videos, the one-on-one troubleshooting help, the partner discounts, everything like that. That one's going to be $39 a month. And that's kind of like our current middle tier membership right now. But then on the top end, you mentioned design. That's the other thing that we have heard from a lot of members and non-members is, look, I really want to learn how to design these parts myself. We have done in the past some live Fusion training courses. So Autodesk Fusion is the software we use for 3D design. There is a free hobbyist version that's available that you can download and and do. a, a, a It really has a ton of functionality. So you can really do anything that we need in our hobby, at least in that free hobbyist version. We've kind of taken a scattershot approach to running live trainings over Zoom on that in the past. But we're going to now make that a regular thing where we're going to have two monthly fusion courses that will teach that anybody in that top membership tier um, can join in on those courses, uh, follow along, ask questions while we're designing. And we're going to start from the very beginning, like basically everything after turning on your computer. Um, and, And so there's no, you know previous experience or knowledge needed. We're going to start from the basics. And then all of those live courses are also going to be recorded and then put into an archive that those top level members, the uh, Scale Speed Garage Elite members will have access to that they can follow along and learn at their leisure anytime. That's fantastic. Man, that's a, that's great. Very versatile, uh, tailor fit to whatever your needs are that's that's a great way of uh of doing it and uh, what what an excellent service because again like what we've been talking about this is becoming such a a major part of our hobby and uh a lot of people want to learn you know that the, the equipment is very accessible it's so the price point is you never imagined it would be so cheap to get into it yeah that really anybody can do it and uh you know and then they have this to help them do it right and have some that that's the thing there's been so many people that would they get a get the programs they get the the 3d printer and they just never can quite figure it out and they ended up it gets stuck in the corner of their garage and gathers Mm -hmm. dust i've seen some go up for sale you know and then they're old and the barely used and they can only like get a fraction of the dollars back that they spent on it you know this way less chance of that happening to some of these guys and then you got a maniac like chuck who buys a printer and then buys another printer and then buys like within eight months of doing this he's gone through 
thirteen printers. He just keeps <laughs> buying that crap. He gets crazy. <laughs> ah, but he's he's doing great stuff, you know. But you know, and yeah. he's he's a part of your your thing, and and through the help that he's gotten through you and a lot of other people he knows, you know, he's uh he really prints really nice stuff. Yeah, and he won't print nothing for me. I've asked him. He won't do it, Chuck. But you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, and you know, there are some pitfalls too that really can be expensive if you're first starting out yeah. and don't know what you're doing. Um, it's very easy if you say have a print failure and you don't catch it or you don't take appropriate oh. steps after that happens to start another print and then end up cracking the screen and then you're out, you know, seventy to a hundred and 50 bucks to buy a new screen for your printer plus the time it takes for it to be shipped to you and you know so there's a lot of that stuff that we cover too but i was one of those when i first started out with resin 3d printing in the in the scale auto world it was really very much still in its infancy and there wasn't really any content out there for that was tailored to what we do and so i spent a ton of time and a ton of money and a ton of resin getting it wrong before I got it right. And so that became my mission with starting Scale Speed Garage was to, to bring my experience and bring all of those wrong ways of doing things to people to help them skip all of that wasted time and energy and money and resin. Yeah, that's great that you felt that way and you're doing that because that's a heck of a service that you're bringing to the community. Um, that, again. We have so much interest in this now. So many people want to do it that uh, yeah. definitely going to need somebody to help guide. You know, everybody's going to be kind of walking around, bumping into walls without it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I have a passion for education. I, I got my start in education. I lived in Southeast Asia for a year and taught English. Oh, wow. And really, it was just an excuse to travel. But my very first teaching job ever was a classroom of like 30 middle schoolers. And so I gained mm -hmm. enough patience there to really be able to handle anything anybody throws at me now. Oh, um, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's just so cool to see. And it's, you know, oh, I really awesome. feel like the, the emergence of 3D printing in our hobby has helped in kickstarting the hobby back into where it is oh, now boy, because yeah. it was on the decline for a long long time and then you know covid happened so everybody had free time and was kind of stuck at home all of a sudden and 3d printing was starting to make its entrance into our hobby as well and i really feel like those two things came together and the right more at the right people... time oh yeah absolutely if there's, if there's something that you can take bring a positive to a very negative thing that time period, which was, you know, such a rough time for us. But as far as this hobby, I, I saw, it, you know, I, I saw it through the eyes of my YouTube channel. It was, it was such a different thing after, you know, come 2020, my, my channel got different reactions. More people were watching. I watched Andy's business explode after that, you know, and yeah. A lot of other hobby shops did started doing really, really well. And, well, is it going to last? Well, by God, this is such an awesome hobby that pretty much everybody, when the life, when the world kind of snapped back into place, I guess, and life got back to normal, everybody stuck with this hobby. It's It, it got into them and they're like, they love it. I, I talked to so many people that that's, that they, they got in it or they either got, back into it in 2020 and they're still they're hooked they're hooked hard yeah, yeah. and so, you know it, we were talking earlier about people griping about the kit manufacturers oh you're only repopping old stuff oh why did you make this without an engine and when people do that i like I, i'm like wait a second we are in a golden age of our hobby right now we truly are. There is more potential and more possibility in our hobby now than there has ever been. Oh, yes. You know, and, and I don't say that to like 
throw shade at the resin casting guys or the scratch building guys. I love scratch building as, you know, as big of a part of my world as 3D printing is. I still get a ton of satisfaction from sitting down and building something from scratch with actual hand tools. Resin casting. I mean, I love that stuff too. I think I mentioned last time I was on, like I've got, you know, uh, I've got a a huge collection of cast resin stuff as well. And I I love using that. But, you know, we just, as with everything, the tools evolve, right? And and we're now in this age where we have these tools that just offer so much unlimited potential. Yeah, yeah. It just makes it so much funner, the things we can build, the amazing stuff we see at the model shows now and and what everybody's capability of doing and the great kits that and the things like a lot of people don't realize because of how the modern tools and technologies are that even goes into the kit manufacturers with making their their toolings and their their um they have been able to recreate and bring back some old kits yes it might still be in the style of the way the old kits were and they complain about that. But if you look at what they redid and how much better it is, mm-hmm. like take that 71, um, the 71 demon, if you could ever get a hold of an original one, and if you were to compare it to this new one they did, this new one is way better. Yeah. The body dimensions, the body itself, it's way better. They retooled. Same with the, uh, um, with the, uh, everybody griped about the, the the Vegas when they come out like the Grumpy's Toy seventy one Vega I have a real issue of it and I did a video and say no man look how much better this new version is because here's the old one yeah yeah every it was yeah they're using the old molds for the chassis and it's simplified not the way that it was in the seventies but they put their effort and time into what really counts that body yeah knocked it right all the things that always that i always tried to fix i even did a resin body years ago trying to fix all the shortcomings of those and round two nailed it so i'm like no you guys are doing great yeah bringing you know we're seeing stuff the 68 uh gto i'm working on the 64 chevelle oh they're just doing that craftsman series no engine we got pl- I got plenty of 67 Chevelle Pro Streets over here. I'm getting one of those 64 um those 64 Chevelles because we haven't had a 64 Chevelle since 1964. Yeah. And now we got a kit we can walk into our hobby shop and buy it. Yeah. So, you know, it is the best time for this hobby. And now yeah. with the 3D printers, I mean, engine the 3D printed engines we they're they're cheap they're so well done by you guys. We order them from you. We get them in a matter of a couple of days. So if your kit doesn't have an engine, you got an engine you can get. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> we got everything we need, man. It's a variety of, you know, it's it it's not just again, like going back to in the past, you would dig around in your parts box and you probably had 10 small block Chevys in there. But now you can, you know, now you can buy a printed small block Chevy with three two barrels and, you know, velocity yeah. stack. What exactly how you want it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing we've never had. And and you know, and again, 1985, I started this hobby, and I have never, you know, I slowed down a few points a couple of times, but I always stayed in the hobby. I never broke away from it. I watched this hobby evolved over the past 45 years and um geez we're coming up to 50 years for me really yeah is it 40 <laughs> 50 i don't 40. i don't want to think about it forget it anyways <laughs> oh. um, edit, edit that out <laughs> but i gotta say i mean i know it and and i talked to some of my friends that i've been friends with them that long they say the same thing you know we've all been in the hobby for 40 50 years yeah, it's very different today. It's way better than it ever was today. It's the greatest time for the hobby. And not to mention, with all this new technology, with what we guys, you and me, sitting here talking, is look at 
how the community has turned into everybody being close. We're friends with people. I just did a show with with John Bailey from York, um, Great Britain, uh, York, England. Yeah. However, it's say I don't know. Sorry, John. <laughs> Uh, we just did a great uh, recording. That's going to be coming out soon. That guy is a great YouTuber and a great model builder. And he's making some masters for me. And he's right. way the heck over there. And we sit there and we discuss stuff for hours. Yeah. Didn't do that years ago. I mean, that right there makes a the hobby that much better. That would have been a $200 long distance yeah. phone bill. <laughs> yeah. Or we would have never met, really. Yeah. We would have never met. And because of the internet, I have... For some reason, I've always hooked up with European people that have done masters for me. I have even now there's a few masters that of uh, some things that I'm coming out with that were done by a guy I used to do a little horse trading with about 20 years ago who was in Germany. I've lost touch with the man. I don't know if he's still out there, but I won't forget him. And I will put his name on the product. It, his name's Peter Leopold. He's from Germany. And he made some really cool things for me. And, uh, it, you know... We never had that, you know, in the 70s and 80s and early 90s and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's it's just the, the, the hobby is the best it's ever been. It's stronger than it's ever been. It ain't dying. You and I know that. Our stuff is selling, right? Yep. Yep. It ain't dying. Exactly. Well, um, I tell you, <laughs> you got anything else you want to you wanna add before we roll? No, I just wanted to throw in... Um... With, you know, with these new changes that we're making to the Scale Speed Garage site um, and the, the members area is going to get a reorganization and a refresh as well. Um, but like I mentioned, you know, like I'm, I'm all about value and making sure that people are getting a deal. And so what I would tell the viewers of this show, if you're someone who's thinking that you want, you, you're really primarily only interested in the parts wait until July 5th or later to join and join with that parts membership. If you're somebody who wants, who needs the, the troubleshooting help and the how to's and everything else, jump in before July 5th, grab like an auto tech, what we currently call an auto tech membership. That'll become our pro membership. Um, and that will, uh, that'll save you a few bucks because when we make this change, we're going to grandfather everybody in at the price they're at. So we're not going to bump the price up on everybody. So if, you, if you're if you somebody who wants more of the, the how-tos and the tutorials and all of that stuff, jump in now before July 5th and you'll lock in a, a little bit lower of a monthly rate. If you're somebody who's looking for just the files, hang out a couple weeks. Um, yeah, whenever this uh, airs, I don't know. But you know, hang out until July 5th and then jump over to scalespeedgarage.com, grab that parts membership, um, and that'll get you uh, just the files, none of the other stuff you don't need. Excellent. Right on. Well, I tell you, everybody, we got down in the description below all the information you need, the, the, the links over to Scale Speed Garage, all the information's over there. If you have any questions, you can contact this guy pretty easy he's he's easy to get a hold of that's the whole yep. point of this is he makes himself available if this is what you're into and if you've watched it this far you probably are definitely go ahead go and go down go to the link down in the description and yeah. uh, get on over there and check it out and, and uh, before we before we launch that new membership structure we have a, a big old graphic right on the home page if you go to scalespeedgarage.com if you click on that and you sign up for our email list that's going to apply a special tag uh, that you expressed interest in the new launch of the, of the new membership structure. If you have that tag and then you join Scale Speed Garage after we launch the new membership tiers, we're going to throw another bonus uh, 3D file pack your way as well, just for being sort of an early adopter awesome. uh, on that. So, Awesome, awesome. Wow. Well, thanks so much for uh, coming on the on the channel there, Chris, and talking about this and letting everybody know um, this is great news. This is a great advancement in our hobby. You're doing great things for the community, and uh, we really, really appreciate it. So, uh, so are you, my friend? Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely, yeah. man. I, it's, yeah. it's, I'm glad we've uh, we've become friends. You're you definitely got something of value there for the again for the, for our hobby for us to enjoy it, but 
you're also a pretty neat guy, man. You're you're a cool model builder too, and that 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 puts you aces in my book. I I like uh, talking with other model builders. So, uh, anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching this. Um, uh, have any questions or you know want to do some discussion down in the comments below? By all means, Chris, you get on there, look at the comments, and and I answer sure anybody's are. questions you want there. You're you're shit, you're welcome to be having discussions there in the comments ask well, your questions everybody that's what we're here for um and uh, uh thanks a ton for watching i mean yeah this is kind of a job for us but we still why why it, what is it about model cars chris that we yeah, we just I, what is that we do this why didn't it didn't feel like a job to me at all you know we yeah talked about mustangs and yeah casting resin and out of print and yeah um yeah it's, i'm all for it it's all it's all fun that's why that's why we yeah do it. yeah so uh well you want to do this with me you gotta keep yeah gluing the fingers together fingers. you gotta keep cutting that styrene right yep We'll see you in the next video. Thanks a ton for watching. And, well, here they are. The producers. Hello, Phoenix.